Okay, assuming that you get six or seven correct on the EA section, six or seven out of 12 on the first uh, 12 questions of the, of the uh, placement test, then you will move on to the second level of the placement test, which is called the college level math section. Now, this, this, this uh, section of the test has 20 questions on it with five choices per question, and you need to get about seven correct on this to place into Math 102. Okay, the first question on this is uh, to foil this expression right here together. And so let's go ahead and do that. I wrote that problem up here. So in this area is that uh, problem written. So it's the square root of m minus 3 square roots of p times the quantity 2 square roots of m plus the square root of p. So foiling this together, taking the first, the square root of m times 2 square roots of m would be 2m. The square root of m times the square root of p is the square root of mp. The inner minus 3 square roots of p times 2 square roots of m is minus 6 square roots of mp. And minus 3 square roots of p times the square root of p is minus 3p. Combining like terms right here, we'd have 2m. This is 1 square root of mp minus 6 square roots of mp, which is a minus 5 square roots of mp minus 3p. And that would be the answer to that problem. Problem 2 is to simplify negative 2 over 6 times quantity x minus 1 minus 4 over the quantity x minus 1. Well, you've got to get a common denominator whenever you're adding or subtracting, and the common denominator would be 6 times x minus 1. Uh, now you say to yourself, what's extra in the common denominator that's not here? Nothing. So nothing extra goes up with the minus 2. So it's minus 2, or minus 2 times 1, minus what's extra in this common denominator that's not here? A 6. So 6 times 4, or 4 times 6. Now, just combine this, uh, 4 times 6 is 24, and minus 2 minus 24 is minus 26 over that common denominator, and this reduces 2 goes into 26 13 times, and 2 goes into 6 3 times, so that would be the answer to that problem. Okay, problem 3 says, what's the period of cotangent of 3t over 2? Well, this is a trick question, and you first need to know that the period of cotangent t, or cotangent x, is pi. Now, what you need to do is if you know that fact, then you have to take that period and you divide it by this coefficient right here. So in other words, we need to take pi and divide that by 3 over 2. Well, taking a number divided by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So that would be the same as pi times 2 over 3, or in other words, 2 pi over 3. And that would be the answer to that problem. Okay, problem four says we're looking for the equation of a line that's parallel to 3x minus 4y equals 10 and goes through the point 5, negative 2. First thing we'll have to do is get the slope of this line. To do that, solve it for y. I took the minus 4y to the right and I took the 10 to the left to get 3x minus 10 equals 4y. Divide both sides by 4 and you get 3 fourths x minus 10 fourths equals y. So the slope of this line is 3 fourths. Now it's saying that a line is parallel to this, so it would have the same slope. So the slope is 3 fourths, and we also know a point x1, y1 here. So put that into the point slope formula y equals m times x minus x1 plus y1, and we would get y equals m, which is 3 fourths, times the quantity x minus x1 and x1 is 5, so it's x minus 5, plus y1, plus a minus 2, which is the same as minus 2. Take the 3 fourths across, you get y equals 3 fourths x, 3 fourths times a minus 5, that's like a minus 5 over 1, that would be a minus 15 fourths, minus 2, and I'm getting a common denominator here, minus 2 is the same as minus 8 fourths. Then just combine these, minus 15 fourths minus 8 fourths is a minus 23 fourths. So that would be the equation, y equals 3 fourths x minus 23 fourths. On problem 5, it says uh, same equation, but we want the uh, line that's perpendicular to this equation. It goes to the point 5, negative 2. Well, we know already that the slope of this line is 3 fourths from the previous problem. The slope was 3 fourths. Now, perpendicular lines have negative reciprocal slopes. That's a fact to know. And so the negative reciprocal of 3 fourths is the negative of that, and then flip it. So that would be negative 4 thirds. Now substitute that slope and that point into the point slope formula, which we have right here. So that would be y equals negative 4 thirds, that's the slope, times quantity x minus x1, which is 5, plus y1, which is a negative 2. Take the minus 4 thirds across, and you get y equals negative 4 thirds x. Minus 4 thirds times a minus 5 is plus 20 thirds. And getting a common denominator here, 
uh, minus 2 is the same as minus 6 thirds. Now 20 thirds minus 6 thirds is the same as 14 thirds, so that would be your equation right there. And problem 6 says where is tangent x, uh, in what quadrants is uh, f of x equal tangent of x positive? Well, the quadrants, let me just use this area right here. The quadrants are labeled quadrant 1, 2, 3, and 4. And tangent is where the ratio of your y's over your x's is positive. Well, both y and x values are positive in the first quadrant, so y divided by x would be positive. And the second quadrant, your x's are negative and your y's are positive, so y over x's would be negative, so not there. In the third quadrant, both your x's are negative and so are your y's negative, and a negative over a negative is a positive. And in the fourth quadrant, your x's are positive and your y's are negative, and a negative over a positive is a negative. So tangent is positive in the first and third quadrant. And that will do it with problem six, and we'll pick it up on problem seven on the next video.